systemic oppression <clears throat> is largely informed by uh, historical contingencies where people living <clears throat> in communities have undergone a, uh, a force uh, change that has been violent um, <clears throat> and they've struggled against that in different scenarios and some they they had to capitulate to to power but it's also informed by philosophies that um, drive or motivate the the force of oppression specifically in the Wangan territories um, we have a different name for it it's called Victoria right and that name was originally intended to signify that it was uh, a very important colony for the British Empire so that's one of the key principles in driving systemic oppression is to extract wealth through exploitative processes and they use discourse as well to uh, critically undermine the resistance of those um, who are struggling against that oppression. It's really important to undermine systematic oppression because systematic oppression tends to uh, reimagine what humanity looks like uh, to favor its, uh, its, its aims, which is to erase uh, people's humanity so that they can be exploited as natural resources. And that's important in this context here where indigenous people have been assimilated um, for the purpose of desanctifying them, desanctifying their relationships with the land. Okay, so that's been a, a very uh, contingent um, or necessary um, aim in mobilizing uh, resource extraction, the generated generation of wealth. That's that's something I'm speaking to historically, but it's also an ongoing process, i.e., uh, pipelines and foreign investment in the lands known as British Columbia. I think that there's a lot of people who are hearing about pipelines, they're hearing about tar sands, they're hearing about super tankers, they're hearing about secret deals that Stephen Harper is making with China, and there's a really, there's a growing anxiety, and there's not really a venue or an outlet for this anxiety, and so Defend Our Coast is a constructed outlet for this anxiety, where people who feel like they need to do something can participate in and feel like they're doing something. But within that space, maybe they'll find other people who are interested in acting outside of a constructed paradigm and interested in acknowledging the process of decolonization as more than just a protest, as more than just a rally, as more than just a dialogue, but as a practice that as active settlers on these unceded territories, we need to take responsibility for. The, the underlying ideology in Defend Our Coast is to uh, gather people in a place to identify um, a force of uh, co colonization. Even a form of protest like Defend Our Coast can be a form of colonialism because it's, it could critically undermine uh, the, the goals and sovereignty of those uh, involved actively in resistance, like indigenous people. Prime example is the name Defend Our Coast. It's signifying that we have ownership, right? Which is a principle that's not really uh, analogous to principles in indigenous uh, sovereignty. And, and we're, we're trying to get away from that. But we're also trying to use a diversity of tactics to undermine colonialism, which is a, the biggest force of systematic oppression.